ます。There's a few reasons why I've been doing this channel thing for nearly eight years, and I haven't yet touched any of the games specifically made for Super Scope. Sure, I've talked about some other titles in the past that are compatible, like Tin Star, T2 the arcade game, and Hunt for Red October, but as far as games that were actually made for the Super Scope, nah, I haven't bothered. The biggest reason is because、uh, I don't own a Super Scope, and even if I did, I'd be using it on a 7 inch professional viewing monitor, which is what I play most of my retro stuff on. Plus, I mean, it seems kind of pointless to me. To own this giant ass plastic bazooka that would take up all sorts of space collecting all sorts of dust. And it's only compatible for a whopping 12 games. I'm sure some of you out there are seething with rage and foaming at the mouth and already aggressively pounding at your keyboards about how I'm actually not a proper Super Nintendo fan for not owning a Super Scope. And hey, knock yourselves out, but I did manage to play Battle Clash and a few other games on a 27 inch Sony Trinitron with an actual Super Scope while capturing some footage, so thanks to Andrew Garcia for setting that up for me. Now, of course, I'd heard of Battle Clash. It came out only a few months after the release of the Super Scope, and it got tons of press and publicity. What I didn't know at the time, however, is that this game was developed by Intelligent Systems. That's right, the same Intelligent Systems that went on to make Fire Emblem and Advance Wars. So, when you see the bright and colorful presentation here with all sorts of character portraits and expressive faces, it comes across as something familiar, which is a bit unusual considering this game was made early on in the Super Nintendo lifespan in 1992. You just didn't see SNES games that looked this good at that point in time. So, the way this game works is that you play as the gunner in a mech controlled by a dude by the name of Mike Anderson. No, not former Denver running back Mike Anderson, or former Philadelphia Phillies right fielder Mike Anderson, or Simpsons director Mike Anderson, or my friend from tech school Mike Anderson. Oh man, I think there are actually too many notable Mike Andersons for me to reference here. It's Mike Anderson Overload. I mean, geez Louise, John Smith is a more distinct name than Mike Anderson. Plus, look at his portrait in the manual. That's not a Mike Anderson, that's way more of a. Roland d r a k a n o w i t z if anything. Really, it looks like Torgo got his next role in Double Dragon. He looks like a chainsaw sculpture. Anyway, Mike needs your help mowing down all these mechs, which each control a particular territory on this map here. Finish them all off, and you get a showdown against the ultimate evil bad guy who apparently killed Mike's father. Sure, it's not the greatest story. I mean, there are episodes of Antiques Roadshow with more drama, but the presentation here is really well done. The backgrounds zoom by as your opponent jumps around from side to side, and even better, they show damage the further the battle goes. Once you finish them off, you make them go boom with a nice, satisfying explosion. There's nine different battles you gotta get through, and other than the first battle, which pretty much serves as like a practice mode, you gotta pick out each opponent's weakness. The manual does a great job giving a scouting report of each opponent. Like, for example, to beat the Scarab, it's easiest to do damage when he opens his front gun port. To beat Lorca, you gotta listen for a certain melody. Which signals that they're triggering a powerful spin attack. When you hear it, you start charging your weapon and fire away to prevent it. Of course, this is all much easier said than done because you'll be using the Super Scope to play this one, and therein lies the challenge. Just point and shoot as accurately as you can. Your weapons are a regular old machine gun and a charge shot that charges automatically when you're not holding the fire button, with the former being used to protect yourself from enemy projectiles and the latter being used to dole out some heavy damage to your opponent. I should take a second to mention that no, this game is not compatible with the SNES controller, and it's not compatible with the SNES mouse. You can only use the Super Scope. Or you can play this one any way you can and just flip your emulator settings to light gun controls, whatever. So, yeah, there's not much else to this game. There are a couple of other game modes. One is a two player thing, but it's alternate turn instead of co op, so you end up fighting the same enemies back to back. There's also a time trial mode where you fight three and eventually four mechs all at the same time, so that's pretty cool at least. Other than that, the thinking behind making a game like Battle Clash stays firmly back in 1992. The fact that this was only intended for a Super Scope makes this one a hard sell today. There aren't even patches that I can find that allow you to use a controller or A mouse on this one. Battle Clash does have its fair share of charm, the character portraits are great, and the cheesy dialogue is always welcome, and the fact that there are strategies to beat each opponent is really nice, but it's laid out in an extremely simple way. I appreciate that they're there, but this isn't exactly Super Punch Out. Battle Clash did get a follow up game called Metal Combat that I'll be taking a look at later, but as far as Battle Clash goes, just be aware of what you're getting. It's fine as a Super Scope game, but it's not compatible with anything else, so buyer beware.
All right, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.